Hey guys, KP here again for another uh, quick tech tip video. Um, this week uh, I had a car come in that I was able to back-to-back -back show the advantages of a fuel pressure compensation table uh, on a vehicle that came in. Um, this is definitely not something you want to run around and drive it like this just because the ECU can do it for you. Um, it's more of a fail-safe. Uh, something in the background to try to catch you when you fall. Um, I've seen a lot of cars in the past where they'll have substandard tanks or don't have proper baffling and they'll go to leave the line and the fuel pressure will drop dramatically and that'll really play havoc with things. You can really hurt the car, you can have stumbles, you can have all sorts of weird issues. Um, this helps to mitigate that some. Uh, you always want to have constant steady fuel pressure but this can try to help you out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the phone around and I'm going to show you a data log before and after and uh, try to explain exactly what I did here. So right here is a data log. Um, I actually have the comparison up so let me close the comparison. So here's the data log of this car running on the dyno. You've got your RPM, you've got your fuel pressure, and you've got O2 feedback. Um, the closed loop feedback up top got as high as 18% on this run. I had just turned the boost up and quickly found the limits of this fuel pump system. You can see right here the uh, fuel pressure. As soon as the boost comes up, this is this green line right here. As soon as the fuel, or as soon as the boost hits peak boost, the fuel pressure starts to dive. The yellow line down here. So we'll get to 64 psi, and then by 6800, we're down to 54 psi. Um, <clears throat> if I remember correctly, it had like a 54 psi of fuel pressure at zero vacuum. So, I mean, we were basically dropping all the way back down, um, you know, losing 10 pounds of fuel pressure throughout the run, which is not good. And, you know, fuel compensation or the uh, O2 compensation was going nuts with it. Um, what I was able to do after that was turn on the fuel pressure compensation that I set up. And I can show you that log now. So with the fuel pressure compensation on, look over here, closed loop compensation by the O2 sensor, at max gets to 2%. 1%, 2 at most. Everything that's going on in the background is the fuel pressure compensation taking care of that fuel pressure drop. So when you do this, you don't have a funky looking VE table, you don't have a fun funky looking fuel map table, anything like that. It doesn't get all weird. <clears throat> and this is what I was speaking of. So in here you'll have a fuel pressure or fuel flow modifier. I just call it fuel pressure offset, fuel pressure and map sensor. And what makes this really easy, I have to give a shout out to uh, Real Tuners. Um, a guy on there had built an Excel file and it makes this incredibly easy. You just wind up putting in your map sensor values, your fuel pressure values, your base fuel pressure, and it'll build you a compensation table. Um, I go in and I adjust it a little bit because I have no need for it to pulling fuel out. So on this side, I'll, I'll pull a good bit away where it's close to the zero axis. Um, and then I'll take usually the first low of addition, the first row of addition out so it's not uh, tickling that at all and doesn't try to add in some at times. But it works great. Um, I'll show you a comparison between the two. So let's just do, let's get rid of boost pressure. We'll do RPM, closed loop comp, and fuel pressure. Let me scale this over. So at the same exact RPM, 
before and after, it's a 14% closed loop compensation difference. The, you're not relying on the O2 sensor for 14% of fueling. And then at most, out here, let's see if we can get there. I mean, you're talking, you know, 15% difference. That's huge that you're not relying on the O2 sensor for that. It's a very good thing to do. Um, also, what you can wind up doing, which I also set up after that, is a boost offset table. So it's kind of like the inverse of the other table. So if your fuel pressure gets really out of whack, you can start to pull target CO2 out with this table, which works out really nice as well. But that's just a uh, quick little how-to or tech tip video of some of the things that do get built into the maps that I do for customer cars. Um, if you guys want to get that Excel file for yourself, make your life a lot easier. I used to build the tables myself and it was a pain in the butt to do. Um, you can just go to realtuners.com. Uh, they have a, uh, a webinar on there on it and it makes it a lot easier for you. You just pay for the, the webinar and you got the Excel file and makes your life nice. So, good luck guys. See ya.